Yoki. So today we will start out in um, kind of like a, a happy baby shape. And if you have wall space you can use, you, you can use that. Um, but that chair or that stool, that piece of furniture would work just as well. Um, and we won't be a happy baby for too terribly long, but do feel free. There's a couple of extra things I like in this shape for uh, the purpose of a restorative practice. That is, um, I always like to have my extra blankie over my mat in a restorative practice, and then maybe a, like a, a shallow pillow or a folded blanket that will help support the lumbar curve of the low back. And I'll show you how I get into this if I'm using the wall. Um, since we're taking happy baby, you might not get your sits bones as close to the wall as normal, and that is okay. Because we're gonna, as we come into this, bend the knees and plant the feet like, like you're in happy baby, except for you don't need to use your arms. So here's where the pillow or the, the folded blanket underneath the low back comes in. So you press your feet into that wall of the piece of furniture, lift your hips up, and then let that little extra prop be underneath the lumbar curve of the low back. I find it to be quite nice. It's sometimes subtle, but um, just that little extra inch or two of support can go a long way. And then we'll bend our knees, we'll plant our feet on our prop. You're letting your knees kind of track out to the sides and the thighs kind of rest along the edges of the waist or the ribs. And then you can reach your arms out wide and just relax here for a few moments. So if you were with me earlier this week for our vinyasa practice, we did a lot of this kind of motion, this happy baby, this kind of squatting, this activating of hip flexors, glutes, quadriceps. So uh, maybe you're sore from that and we'll kind of work with that soreness today in, in a restorative way. I'm sore, I don't know about you all, but that was some hard work. If you have no idea what I'm talking about, if you haven't tried the vinyasa practice, um, go back into the archives and, and check it out. It was a fun one. Let's take a, a little bit of time here to just, maybe if it feels comfortable, you close the eyes. Let your shoulders kind of relax away from the ears a little bit. Check in with your neck. And then check in with your breath. So without forcing it, maybe you start to deepen the breath a little bit. Maybe you draw out the inhale, just take a little bit longer. And draw out the exhale. So can you do that um, without adding tension or gripping on the breath, without adding anxiety or pressure? Just maybe try a, try a gentle extension of the breath. Let's take about three more breath cycles here in this first shape. gently roll off to a side. You might 
kind of land in a fetal position. Take your time on your exit. And let's come up to our hands. Press in your hands and we'll come up to a seat. And we'll, so we kind of worked with the outer edges of the hips. Um, maybe you felt a little bit of sensation along the inner thigh. We'll continue with that, working now with our chair upright. Or can we also use blocks if you don't have a chair in the And then if you have that extra pillow or blanket and you want a little padding underneath your knees, I always appreciate that. My knees always appreciate that. So go ahead and place your knees on that extra fold. We'll take one foot forward, doesn't matter which one, and maybe let it be a wide stance. So I'm taking my left foot forward and my foot's, like the border of it's against the outer edge of my mat. And I'm gonna walk down onto my forearms on the chair. That might not work for you. If you need to stay up on your hands, stay up on your hands. But so like whatever depth you're allowing your body to come into, do so consciously, mindfully with the breath. Make sure it makes sense for you. Acknowledge why you're choosing what you're choosing. That's always a, a key a key part of yoga practices is practicing that discernment, the ability to understand what is a wise choice, what is an appropriate choice for, for you. And that might be different from day to day body to body. Okay, so it doesn't always have to look the same. And just for a minute, if you're able, press into the foot that's forward, press into the big toe mound of that foot. And then you might just check out the back leg. You might like curl the back toes under, lift the back leg up, and then set it back down so it's just a little bit longer and you might start to feel some sensation across the front of the hip flexor. Right, so my leg, my right leg is the one that's back. That's where I feel that most sensation. And we'll be here for about a minute longer. This really doesn't take much to start to feel quite intense. So if you do need to back out, go ahead and you can always shift your hips back over that back knee, and then come forward, back into your low lunge when you're ready. And can you tune into your breath here? Keep relaxing your shoulders and your neck and your jaw. Pay attention to your breath. Alright, let's back out of this nice and slow. Pay attention to your exit, your transition. So walk up onto your hands if you're on your forearm. You can keep your hands in contact with your prop, your chair maybe, as you lengthen out through that front leg. Just give it a little break. And then front knee back into its place. So my left knee is coming back in line with my right knee. And we'll just switch sides. So now I'm gonna send my right foot forward. And I'm letting my right foot plant wide. It's kind of like tracking with the outer edge of the mat. I'm gonna come onto my forearms or stay up on my hands, whatever makes sense for this side. Plug it to the big toe mound of that front foot. Maybe you curl the back toes under, you could lift the back knee just to lengthen out a little bit more. And then you can start to from here, if it's wise to do so. Sink a little bit more forward into the hips. Start to tune into your breath. If you 
have it already. We're under a minute here, so just see if you can relax shoulders, jaw, neck, anywhere you're feeling gripping, kind of scan the body and notice. One more breath. If you're on your forearms or you come down low, walk back up to the hands and you can shift that front leg straight, and lengthen out. Take a breath or two. And then right knee back into its place. Okay, now we're gonna come into um, a seated forward fold and I'll give you a couple of options to um, arrange the legs. The props again here are highly encouraged. So one prop I would suggest is again that folded blanket or pillow underneath the sits bones so that the sits bones get a little bit of a lift. This will provide a forward tilt of the pelvis. So instead of rounding through the low back and um, causing a lot of extra stress on the spine, it allows the pelvis to tilt forward, which allows the spine to be nice and tall. To start off, we'll come into a forward fold in a minute. Um, so the legs, I'm gonna face you for a moment. A couple different ways you can do this. You can stack one ankle on top of opposite knee, like a, a little fire log. You can keep it really loose, like an easy cross-legged seat. And if there's a lot of space underneath the knees, you prop them with folded blankets, blocks, pillows, whatever you have at your disposal, even books. Okay, or one more option, cross one knee, gomukhasana legs it's called. Gomukhasana means cow face. So I'm not sure why this denotes cow face, but I, that's what it's called. <laughs> okay, so in, in this shape, um, knees are kind of stacked. They might not get completely stuck, and it's okay if they're slightly off center. And then the feet kind of sweep off to the side, so there's like this line from ankle to knee to ankle. So those are the three options, stacking the legs, easy cross-legged seat, or go mukhasana. Okay, and then we're going to face our prop or chair or stacks of things, whatever it is, and arrange yourselves into some kind of a forward fold. And, and that might mean that like you're just starting by sitting up, tucking the chin into the chest, and allowing the spine to kind of roll forward. And it might mean that the chair or the prop is accessible for you to let your forehead rest there, kind of lean into it a little bit more. Uh, we'll be here for longer, so this will allow your body to release, relax, and it might mean, it doesn't have to mean this, but it might mean that the props are too high eventually, like the body might start to want to go further, and if that's the case, let the body go further. If it's not the case, don't force it. I didn't mention this, but it doesn't matter which leg you have on top or in front but do pay attention, note that, because we will do the second side. For example, I have my right leg on top, so just, just take a moment to note that. Which leg is on top, which leg is in front. A lot of different um, techniques for breathing pranayama practice within your restorative. There's one in particular that you've tried with me that you enjoy. Feel free to take that. Um, one that I've been enjoying lately is called Sama Vriti. Sama means same or equal. Vriti means fluctuation. So all we're really doing with that kind of breath 
is matching the length of the inhale to the length of the exhale. How long is your inhale and exhale? That's up to you. So what I would suggest is seeing how long it takes you to inhale. Maybe you just count, like inhale for however long it takes you to fill full of air. And then see if you can match that count on your exhale. So it might be like four counts in, four counts out, five counts in, maybe six. It doesn't matter really how long, but see if you can synchronize inhale to exhale. One more breath here. And then lift up, uncurl the spine. Let's uncross the legs, stretch the feet forward. You take your hands back behind you to kind of counterbalance that and then just wave the feet side to side, shake out the legs. Get a little blood flow, oxygen back into the joints muscles. All right, and then we'll check out the second side. So again, remember which side you did first. And if you forget, you try both sides. Whichever side feels most awkward is probably the side you did not do first. You do not have to do the same shape you did on your first side. So, you know, like if you have a knee injury or a hip mobility limitation, do something different. Maybe it's an easy cross-legged seat. Maybe you're using the support of your, your blocks or your props underneath you. Okay, so give yourself some, some grace and some wiggle room. Try not to be so rigid in uh, this idea of, I must look a certain way, especially in a restorative practice. This is so much more about how does it feel? Can we tap in? to parasympathetic nervous system response, and allowing ourselves to feel protected, safe, and having healthy boundaries. Okay, so when you're ready, if you haven't already, curling the chin in, rounding forward, any amount Remember we have a longer hold here. It's about three minutes. So you have plenty of time for this posture to unfold for you. We're not forcing it. It's um, a natural progression. And always remind us to continually relax the jaw, the neck, the shoulders, especially when we're working with the hips, because if those are tight, uh, odds are that the tension will rise up, path of least resistance, and kind of settle in the upper body. So can you become aware of where you're feeling sensation? 
Use the breath there. Use your exhalations to soften. Use your inhalations for awareness, for acknowledgement. If you haven't already, maybe it's the sum of Riti, counting your inhale, synchronizing that with your exhale. Keep coming back to your breath. Over and over again. One more inhale here. And then slowly you can sit up. Hands can Come behind the hips as you extend your legs forward. Legs down through the legs. Wave the feet side to side. You can kind of bounce the legs up and down. Good. All right, so as it does in these practices, our time goes so quickly. Um, so our last shape I'd like us to set up for a really lovely Shavasana. This might mean you use your prop, like you drape your calves over the chair, or you could come back to the wall. Um, I want you to get super duper comfortable. We have time for a nice long Shavasana today. So if there's any last movement or shape you want to take, feel free. If your low back is a little bit bothering you today, I always recommend if you're going to come onto your back for Shavasana to take something underneath the backs of the knees. I always tend to get a little bit colder. The body just cools down naturally in Shavasana, so extra layers are always welcome. Even though it's going to be about 75 degrees today in my neck of the woods, my basement is freezing. <laughs> so um, settle into your shavasana in, in the way that supports you best. Relax your shoulders away from your ears. Lengthen out through the back of the neck. Take a breath in through the nose. And open your mouth. Exhale the air out. Try that twice more. Inhale deeply. Imagine all tension, all stress releasing on your exhale. One more time, inhaling through the nose. Then open the mouth, exhale wide, maybe even stick out the tongue. And then relax your jaw. Let your back teeth part. Your tongue widen at the base of your mouth. Imagine as if you could even soften the teeth 
and the gums and the lips. to the eyes and you let your eyes close what would it be like to allow yourself to surrender just for these last few minutes together eyes closed let them sink heavy in their sockets and relax the flesh around the eyes awareness now rests at that space between the eyebrows. Almost like as if you were sitting in front of a big screen. Watching that point right between the eyebrows. First, that screen might be black or blank. But the more and more you are able to sink in and relax and soften, eventually maybe shapes or colors or images emerge on that screen right in front of your face. stay longer in your shavasana, please do. If you need to move on with your day, slowly, just gentle, start to awaken the fingertips and the toes. Shift your head side to side. If you're on your back, you can stretch your arms up and overhead and stretch into the length of the body. And then bend the knees and come off to a side and into fetal position. I'm just resting on your side here for a moment. Pressing in your hands, coming up to a comfortable seat just briefly. short pranayama, pranayama practice. We'll um, inhale through right nostril, exhale through left, two rounds. And we'll switch side, inhaling left, exhaling right, two rounds. And then neutral breath. Hands can just face down on the thighs, shoulders back, spine tall. So you're just imagining breathing in through the right nostril for four, three, two, one. Feel or sense the breath out through the left for four, three, two, one. Imagine through the right, breathe in, four, three, two, one. Out through the left, four, three, two, one. And we'll change sides. We'll imagine or feel or sense breathing in through the left, four, three, two, one. Imagine breathing out through the right, four, three, two, one. In through the left, four, three, two, one. Out through the right, four, three, two, one. Inhale through both, four, three, two, one. 
out through both four three two one one more round on your own Join the hands together at the heart, bowing the chin to the chest to seal in our practice, to acknowledge our effort, to have reverence and gratitude for ourselves, for showing up, for setting aside this time. May you remember that you will always be okay. May you find a white light that guides you and keeps you safe. May you have hope, help, and happiness along the way. Namaste, yogis. Thank you, everyone.